Again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our talk today. Uh, we'll have uh, Prashant Kador with us for the next hour or so, who is our Director of Engineering, and he'll be joining us to give us a preview on the EMC Community Day, which we have planned for December 6th of this year. So this is a preview of what's to come in that event. Hopefully we'll be introducing some really interesting topics and giving you plenty of teasers uh, to get you all excited for that Community Day. So just before we jump into the presentation and the stuff you're all interested in why you came here, we have a few housekeeping rules. So if you have any questions throughout the session, please feel free to put them into the questions box on the GoToWebinar sideboard. We'll be monitoring these throughout the webinar and we'll be coming to these at the end of the event where Prashant will be answering the questions. So please make sure to, to put anything that comes into mind into the question box. Additionally, if you think of any questions after the event, I know that always happens to me, then you can reach out to us directly at developer at zebra.com via email, or alternatively, you can head over to our developer portal, developer.zebra.com, and you can post a question on our forums where one of our experts will get back to you. So lastly, we have a few upcoming events that we just wanna make sure that you're all aware of. So Prashant, if you could just progress the slides, please. The next uh, dev talk that we have coming up is uh, November 16th, and it's all around how to a, print a PDF from an Android device. So this is a question we commonly get asked by a developer community, so one worth tuning into. And then of course, following that, we'll have our actual EMC community day, where we'll be going through all the topics that we touch on today uh, in a little bit more detail. Uh, and then we can uh, get going. So the stage is all yours. Thank you. All right. Thank you, James. Yeah, it's in presentation mode. So, <clears throat> um, the purpose of this presentation is not getting to the depth of so many topics I have listed here, uh, but that's going to be in December. That's the December Community Day. But I'm just going to take you through it. It's like a sneak peek uh, of what is coming. So, we are not going to get into the technical details or how to use it, configuration, and get into the discussion on how to how to manage it those kind of things but I'll take you take you through what is new what is coming and then in December will uh, there will be uh, each of these topics will be presented by uh, the experts and SMEs from that uh, from those teams and then they will be able to answer you uh, your questions and get into the depth of things so the first thing we will do is uh, talk about uh, zebra DNA cloud and some of you might have heard of it, and uh, that's a new solution. And then we'll get into enterprise browser and data edge, what's new in that. And then we talk about Android 13. Android 13 devices are gonna uh, uh, come out very soon. Uh, and what does it mean for us as a developer? Uh, and we'll introduce you, we'll talk very um, in, uh, lightly on, on those topics as well. And then there is a scope storage. Uh, the topic of scope, uh, scope storage is much discussed topic. Uh, it, it brings uh, several features as well as several challenges on how to write applications. Uh, while we touch upon some of the scope storage challenges that it's gonna bring, I'll also sh try to show you some of the tools we have or we are planning on providing for A13 that's gonna help you write enterprise applications and still uh, secure, uh, make sure that the privacy and security of the scope storage uh, is, is not uh, circumvented. And then the, finally, we'll look at some of the existing tools, what changes we are making them, especially towards scope storage and A13. All right, um, so the first topic is Zebra DNA Cloud. As it says, it's a cloud solution. That means there is a server piece and a client piece. So you, you're going to have to install the server piece first uh, in order to get the, and then install the client, and client needs to be able to talk to this. But what is the, the vision behind this cloud solution? We have several tools, and many of, many of these tools, you're already aware of them. You use them on a daily basis very frequently. Uh, it could be enterprise keyboard or it could be device central and um, uh, data wedge enterprise browser emdk 
or it could be stage now, enterprise home screen, and then coming down to the, uh, the management part of the, the zebra D mobility DNA, which is MX, D uh, device diagnostics, device tracker, OEM config, uh, wireless fusion, and all these, all these tools are available today and they, they bring zebra value adds like no other company can. Um, but our goal is to bring them all under as many of those as possible under one umbrella and make a simple, consistent user experience for, uh, for using those tools. And right now it's fragmented. We want to bring them all together. However, if you, um, if you have to configure enterprise keyboard or enterprise home screen, install it, configure it, uh, through one tool instead of doing it as a separate uh, separate tool. So the same thing with data edge, same thing with uh, staging a device and configuring a device. So that's why this is a simple, consistent user experience in one place. You log in in one place and then you get that. And then it has to be intuitive. And then, uh, as I said, it's a unified interface, so it's no longer fragmented. Some are, today, some are PC tools, uh, and some are cloud tools. We, we, we plan on bringing them all under one umbrella. And this works with or without third party EMM. And it comes with a freemium that is free of charge. And then uh, there will also be a, a term based licensing uh, part of that. Uh, premium functions will also be available for uh, one. Uh, the term base is usually one, three, and five. Uh, that is also available. Pretty quickly on how the dashboard looks. Our goal is to keep it as simple as possible. You can see uh, it shows a bunch of device status on the on the left hand side uh, menus, and then licenses, and then uh, uh, the, the goal is to integrate the help as much as possible within this tool itself. So you see uh, a number of videos on how to use this uh, uh, the solution, and in this. Uh, you, the first thing you ever do is set up a device, and then for that, your device, if you're taking it out of the box, you want to get it on Wi-Fi, and then make sure you connect to the cloud, and that's what this, this tool is supposed to be. Uh, this particular uh, feature is supposed to be, and it spits out a barcode at the end, and then you, you scan the barcode, just like you, you do the, uh, using the stage now on the device, and then now you are connected to the uh, cloud. You get to see your devices here. You get to group them. And you can reset device passcode, reboot device, wipe device, delete a device, and then even update the Zebra DNA Cloud client on those devices. In addition to that, you can also do remote support. You can, you can uh, gain control of the device and then uh, do support and uh, even configure the devices. And um, you can, that's the remote control I, I mentioned. And the next one is you can check the battery health uh, of the devices. And then uh, device settings themselves as to, um, uh, the, you can set the devices in two ways. One is a, a wizard way, which is very simple, but uh, it, it gives you powerful features to modify your device settings. Or you could go into more advanced where you get to control each and every uh, feature at a granular level as, as shown here, similar to what you have in stage now, where this is really using the OEM config uh, of the MX, and then you get to control uh, at a very uh, uh, granular level. And um, obviously, they all can be bundled under profiles, and those profiles can be pushed to the devices, individual devices or group devices. And then we come to installing apps. You could install your apps, or you could install Zebra's apps, such as um, Enterprise Home Screen, Enterprise Browser, Enterprise Keyboard. And your own apps, you, uh, that you can also push the configuration files for these apps as well as your apps. And moving forward, these, we will also support the managed config on these apps um, pretty soon, and then uh, that's going to be a, a good value to add. 
And the next thing is you can do LG updates on this one. Um, this is where you can uh, you can target a device or uh, multiple models of different models. Uh, you can create a and manage ongoing and completed deployments. Uh, and also you can see what updates are available. And, um, and then as, as shown here, you can also select a specific Android update. You don't have to update it to the, the latest. And then uh, you can also do auto deployments. These are all um, either many of those features are e either already available or they're coming soon. And then, like I said, there is a licensing part of this. That's the premium uh, features available in Zebra DNA Cloud. And those need uh, licensing. And once you buy the licensing, you can view them here and you can apply them to your devices, individual devices or to the group of devices the way you want them. And it also shows you how many, how many licenses are available, how many are already used. And you can deallocate licenses. So that is the Zebra DNA Cloud. And then I'm going to move on to the next topic, what's new in Enterprise Browser and Data Wedge. Uh, this is the Data Wedge. Um, very quickly, I'm going to uh, show you some of the new features we have added in the last few months or so. One is launching QR code and um, uh, image capture using Imager friendly uh, scanner, uh, Beep ADF, friendly scanner interface for MP7000 support. All of these have been added. They are available on TechTalk, so you can go and look at how they work. Um, while I'm, I'm, I don't plan on playing the video here, but these videos are embedded, and uh, those who get access to these slides can view them later. And then the next big one uh, item is barcode highlighting. The use case is uh, I am an operator, I'm doing picking, and there are several barcodes, and I want to be able to identify the barcode I am interested in, where you can say the string, substring, symbology, length, and several rules. You can create rules and then say, when you see these kind of barcodes, I want you to highlight it using a specific color here we have three colors here uh, on one barcode and red another one is yellow some other screen depending on how you want it you can configure it to uh, highlight the barcodes in your viewfinder next uh, the one is uh, recently we have released is uh, ocr uh, so this brings you capability for scanning license plates uh, higher identification, identification of documents such as passports and driver's license, vehicle identification number, VIN number, and then container ID. You, you, could, uh, you could do these OCRs and, uh, that, that could be pretty uh, useful. And please note that, um, so these are licensing, licensed offerings. Um, as far as what is free and what is not, you can go online in Tech Docs and see some of the document captures that are still free and the OCR features that have come in recently. And then moving on to Enterprise Browser. And um, most of you know what Enterprise Browser is. You can write uh, HTML apps and uh, run them on our devices, which can make use of the features that are available on Zebra devices. And that's where we have the JavaScript APIs. You can use them to access scanning or printing or signature capture in your applications. It's a very popular tool um, for, for, for those who are interested in web apps. Um, one thing we have done is, among other tools, we have released Enterprise Browser on Play Store, uh, and also we added support for running Enterprise Browser in Zebra Workstation Connect, that's ZWC. Uh, we have added support uh, recently. Uh, those are the, the very uh, highlights, and then in addition to that, we have modified Enterprise Browser on Scope Storage 
to work with scope storage uh, and then we will talk about it very uh, uh, in the next few slides but in december we are going to get into the depth of this what does it mean what files can you access how do you access them what do you need to do if you can't access uh, 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 those files that are on sd card if you are trying to uh, share files uh, with uh, other applications so some of the scope storage restrictions uh, we have built uh, enterprise browser to be compliant with it and this is the workstation connect support i mentioned uh, the bottom line is workstation connect gives you a, a ability to put your device in the cradle and then connect it to your monitor and then control it from there and if you are running an app on the device uh, you could also use it on the uh, on the monitor and enterprise is one of that those apps that supports it that means it knows how to work with the new resolution uh, and make complete use of the, the screen size and also it supports touch capable monitors as well so we are adding managed config support for enterprise browser so in the play store enterprise browser uh, when we have the managed config uh, we're getting close to releasing it so you should be able to use emms to configure uh, enterprise browser using managed config uh, today all your configurations are in uh, using the config files we'll continue to support them but um, those who are using emms they can they can use the standard managed config and as i said before the cloud zdna cloud that zebra dna cloud that we have created that also uses manage config when it's available so that you can instead of pushing a file you can control it uh, from zebra dna cloud as well and for those you know uh, enterprise browser has literally hundreds and hundreds of features um, vast majority of them if not all unless some of the deprecated ones are there other than that uh, all of them will be supported in manage config as well And I talked about um, some of the, the, the new data capture experience, the barcode highlighting, OCR, image capturing. Those features will be supported by enterprise browser as well. Uh, so um, it wasn't there before, now we are adding that in the next version of EP. So switch gear to Android 13 uh, and uh, <clears throat> We are skipping Android 12 and we are moving directly into Android 13 and it is expected uh, Android 13 devices will start coming out next year. Well, why are we skipping them? Um, because uh, we want to support 5G and Wi-Fi 6. So for that reason, we are moving to Android 13. That's where we get support for them. And also we released A11 our customers are still moving to A11. So instead of releasing A12 and immediately turn around and release A13, uh, and we, we are moving to A13, so that gives some kind of a breather for most of our customers from moving to A11 to A13. Also, um, A12, it, yes, it does has some enterprise features, but not big enough, we see that if you add the enterprise features in A12 and then A13, that makes a big bang uh, for all the effort that one takes to move uh, from one OS to another. So that's why uh, listed a few of Android 12 as, a, as well as Android 13 features here. And there are several, a lot more than this, but these are the ones I picked, um, not necessarily most important for everybody but this is the one i picked uh, like any other os android continues to add more enhancements around security and, and privacy whether it's foreground service what restrictions it's <coughs> bringing or where if you are using location there is a course location and a fine location you may not be able to get fine location unless you add permission for it and then how your app behaves when it goes into hibernation, um, 
compared to uh, the older SDK versus 32 and higher. Uh, so basically what it means is your app is gonna behave as if it's manually forced up and those kind of information, we will touch upon this in a, um, in a detailed manner in, in, in uh, December, but this is something you gotta be understanding as you move into A13 and start using higher versions of SDK what it means for your existing applications as well as designing a new applications what changes you have to make in order to make it compatible and make use of the features that are available uh, in a 13. and those who know uh, there is work profile cope more and uh, if you are using work profile what it means from a security enhancement points of point of view as uh, in a12 as well as a13 how do you know what are the enable? Uh, so if you're using a uh, work profile, your uh, administrator might have disabled some features. So how do you write your application to know what's enabled and disabled? And security logs are enhanced both in A12 and A13 for collecting and evaluating security risks. And as always, there are some uh, deprecations as shown here. Some of them are replaced, some of them may not be. Uh, so uh, but the, a big long list of what is deprecated and what are the changes, both in APIs as well as the behavior of the APIs are uh, provided by Android, uh, on, on Android website. And continuing on, the storage, uh, media document provider, uh, and a new directory for voice recording. And then also secure lock screen notification. <clears throat> allow the device to be unlocked for certain notification action. Uh, and then also toasts, um, they've been uh, redesigned toasts and then limited uh, text is limited to two lines now, depends on the screen size, it could be even less. And then also shows app icon when it's from where it's originated. So these are some of the visual as well as um, the API changes you can expect that will have direct or indirect impact on your applications. And we'll get into the depth of these changes uh, in the community day. Uh, the purely on just on A13, obviously whatever is there in A12 that gets inherited into A13, but just on A13, <coughs> excuse me, um, further FGS um, <coughs> changes from security point of view. Uh, you can stop the foreground services from notification drawer and the new notification runtime permissions uh, for uh, sending non-exempt notification, uh, but FGS is also non-exempt. And then the battery, so uh, battery limitations and restrictions, they continue to add more and more there. Uh, so some of them could be <clears throat> uh, new limitations on what app can do in background when it's placed in restricted list. And it also won the user if there is excessive battery usage and long running foreground services as well. And more things on how long your apps can run uh, in, in background services, all of that is very interesting. While it is those changes could also be challenges and uh, we hope to touch on them and, uh, and give our um, feedback to you in December on how to write applications using them and around them if necessary. On the developer productivity itself, themed app icons that changes with the themes, multi-language support, um, you can use a different language even if, if the system language is different during runtime, text conversion APIs and many many more APIs are available. So that's the what's new in A13, just in um, uh, just in um, A12 and A13 from Android perspective. But we'll talk a little bit about scope storage now. You all have heard of scope storage. Um, it is started. Uh, it, it's been there for a while. Some of you were able to opt out. Some of you have been using it. Many of our own Zebra apps have been uh, working around scope storage. Um, the, the goal was to protect privacy of app and user data. Uh, so that means that your access to certain files, if you haven't created them, will be limited. And also 
access to external storage will also be limited. <clears throat> While it seemed pretty harmless in if you, at a cursory, uh, if your applications need to uh, share data with other applications or import configuration files from EMMs or some other place, that's going to bring a lot of cha challenges. We saw that in our applications. So um, how do we handle this? Because enterprise use cases require us to be sharing data. How do we handle that? This is where we came up, uh, so we made several changes. Um, and um, one of that is Secure Store Manager or SSM. <clears throat> and we brought in major changes in our architecture. We redesigned several of our applications and components to make them more uh, improve the performance as well as efficient. As part of that, Secure Store Manager gives you option to securely share data <laughs> as well as files between uh, applications. So you can, using SSM, an app can share uh, files as well as data between two apps as well as persist data uh, just like you do today uh, in using a max ssm provides <clears throat> mechanism to do persistent as well as non-persistent work and just to give you this is how it, it would look like app one can uh, insert data for uh, in ssm and then say i want this to be used by app two or uh, app one can itself decide to use it at a later time after reboots and uh, enterprise reboots especially so that the data exists. So, uh, and the, the, the app two gets a notification that app one is sending uh, in information and then it can go and access that data. And uh, by the way, we are not, Zebra is not creating a new technology here. Uh, we want to be aligned with Android as much as possible. So, we are using content provider and file provider in order to accomplish the SSM. And we will get into the depth of how to write applications to use it. And you will also see how to use, um, uh, how EMMs can also use to push files. Uh, for example, EB configuration file, they can decide to use the SSM to pass the files to uh, uh, EB in a secure way. <laughs> so that's the SSM, but there is a lot more than this. There are se several pages, several videos, several uh, even codes and demos available that we will get in, uh, in, in, in December. So whether it's A13 or the scope storage changes, uh, what are some of the changes that are coming uh, in the next few months, especially for A13? Um, scope storage especially has brought uh, several changes. So while these challenges, um, these changes were made with privacy and security in mind, they, they bring challenges. So we have used this as an opportunity to um, make our components more efficient, improve performance, but yet support enterprise use cases. So our goal is to, whatever we have done, reduce the changes in behavior of Zebra tools for the end user as much as possible. So the workflow of end users should not change. So some of the questions that we will discuss in depth, depth in, in December is, um, what is gonna happen to enterprise partition? That's a very popular tool for persisting data as well as sharing data across applications. Uh, does it remain? If it is still there, uh, is it enabled by default? Um, but it is disabled by default, but it can be enabled. <clears throat> like I said, uh, Zebra SSM can be used for sharing data storage and persistency, not necessarily enterprise partition. Um, <clears throat> now, theoretically, enterprise partition can also come under SSM eventually. That means that whatever you're doing today, you may not be able to do uh, that freely moving forward, just like you, just like 
scope storage is bringing so many uh, limitations and restrictions on storage card uh, that could also happen on enterprise partition. So we will get into the depth of uh, those topics as well. So in A13, do Zebra apps use SSM? Yes, we will support, we will make sure we will support SSM as well as the existing model, uh, for example, EHS and Data Wedge use configuration file for mass deployment, uh, even EKB and EKD enterprise keyboard, enterprise key, uh, keyboard designer, they use uh, files. We will continue to support them and how to how to you deploy those files, we will discuss that in detail in uh, community day as well. What about manage config? Um, all these apps, data by GHS, EB, EKB, and a number of other tools, do they support or will they support manage config? Yes, they will. As we move into A13, they will support, and many of them will be available on Play Store and you could use the manage config or you could use the manage config for these tools that will be made available in zebra uh, dna cloud solution as well <clears throat> and uh, we talked about google play store some apps are already there there are some restrictions on um, using apps that are compliant with play store that brought about some security changes enforced by google um, those that information is available on tech talks uh, but it's very important to know if you are installing from play store or that version <coughs> what it means how they behave uh, when you install it when you upgrade them uh, that's that information is available we will talk about it in december and what about stage now? Um, will stage now use this re-architect component? Yes, it will on A13. Um, you will see some changes on how you print barcodes and all of that. But there are there, there are many questions here. Can I use my existing profile in the new stage now? Yes. But can I use my existing barcode that was created using old? Uh, maybe not. So that is uh, that information will be provided in December. And as far as creating a new barcode with the existing profile, it's fairly simple. You go there and then recreate the barcodes. And then the next big thing is EMDK. When I move to A13, you say EMDK is using this re-architect underlying component. <clears throat> what does it mean for my applications? Do I need to recompile my application? What if I don't? recompile my applications if you are using mx features in emdk we strongly recommend that you recompile but for those cases where you don't have a choice uh, maybe there are third-party apps that are using mx features and you don't have access to code uh, you can uh, it, you can use your apps uh, for a period of time by loading and uh, we will make an mx site loadable app available you can load them and then you can uh, use your apps but that's only for a short period of time after that we we strongly recommend that you move to the uh, new emdk and recompile your apps you, you just recompile you don't necessarily need to change any code um, but well one thing is that's just the EMDK, um, as well as the backward compatibility with your A13, I talked about EMDK, but please note, Google itself is enforcing several behavioral as well as, as, well as API changes in A12 and A13. So that may require you to modify your apps. So that is something, one, you need to do research, and we will talk about uh, what to expect in A12 and A13 in December. So on top of that you may want to research and even test your apps before you uh, get them ready for it i believe that's the last slide i have try to keep it simple and short as much as possible so that you all can think through this and then um, start preparing for it and then if you have any questions uh, in december 
so that we can get into the individual use cases and as well as individual challenges that you may come across you you, you may forward those questions to us so that we can prepare for the community day uh, in december uh, james yeah thank you very much prashant that was a great presentation lots of uh, really good information and uh, emphasis on lots, lots of changes coming along uh, over the next year or so. Um, so with that said, we do have quite a few questions that have come in already. So I'll just start making my way through these one by one uh, in chronological order. So uh, the first question here is from Matt. So is the general idea of Zebra DNA Cloud to supplement EMMs like Intune that do not have native capabilities for app management, OS management, and remote control as compared with EMMs that are more capable of managing Zebra devices like SOTI or AirWatch WS1? Yeah, so um, Zebra DNA Cloud, um, one, we designed it for those who may not have EMMs. And also too, our goal is not to support all the features and uh, capabilities that SOTI and AirWatch have. We, we wanna keep it as simple and as limited in scope as possible. And we wanna be able to work along with EMMs, with or without EMMs, but our goal, uh, is to support those limited use cases where they may not need EMM. But most of the people who are using EMMs today will continue to need them. And they may decide, for example, some of the features such as LG updates is much easier using Zebra DNA Cloud. And they may go just for that, or LG updates could be done through Zebra uh, DNA Cloud. So you can pick and choose a few important features where it makes sense from a value perspective and then switch to this but emms will continue to provide a very rich variety and a set of features that they provide today we don't we don't get into that okay great answer thank you uh, next question then from david are there minimum device requirements for a device to use dna cloud uh yes um so that information is available um, on tech docs. Uh, what, uh, so not only the OS, also A11, if you're using A11, there is minimum <coughs> uh, BSP requirement. Uh, you need some LGE updated, but as you can see, as we move into A13 and everything, we're gonna start supporting all the, uh, all different uh, BSP versions as well. But right now, yes, there are, uh, uh, there are uh, some limitations on what device we support, as well as what BSP and what LG updates we support. Uh, that information is available on Tech Talks today. And I gave a link to Tech Talks here uh, in one of my earlier slides, so we can look at it. Yep, so that's techdocs.zebra.com. I'll also just put that in the chat as well for anyone who's interested. That's where all of our uh, enterprise mobile computing documentation is housed. Okay, so the next question here, I think I might actually be able to take this one. So it's from Matt. Um, can barcode highlighting viewfinder view be fed into the HD4000? And on the same lines, can the camera on the HD4000 be used with camera-based scanning with data edge? So keep me honest here, Prashant, but there is no support, as far as I'm aware, in data edge for the HD4000. So you wouldn't be able to use the barcode features, barcode highlighting features in that sense. With that said, I have actually created a proof of concept based on this topic where you can use Google's MLKit SDK and you can essentially feed the uh, images that are captured or the frames that are captured from the HD 4000 into MLKit. And then you can take the output from that uh, to overlay the barcode highlighting on the viewfinder. So it does actually work reasonably well and you can find that on my github so it's james swinton uh, on github um that's correct isn't it prashant there's no support in data edge for the hd4000 <coughs> okay. perfect so the next question here from david again uh will the enterprise slash user uh, directory be affected by scope storage 
um not today but um i i believe it will be eventually uh, so that's why we are making sure uh, we have options so that if that ever happens um, you can switch over to the options and also the options that we are saying now whether it's persistency or passing uh, files between two applications are a lot more secure so we strongly recommend that you go that route rather than uh, sticking to enterprise partition that's clear okay uh, are any emms currently using ssm we are looking to see if we can limit SSM to EMM usage only for some specific files. I, I will have to get back on that. Uh, I do not have the latest information, so I don't want to speak something only to change it later. So uh, let's take that as an action. Sounds good. Yep, perhaps we can cover that in the, uh, the actual community day as well. Uh, a follow-up here from Jean. Uh, also, will SSM help with super persistence beyond a clean boot or uninstall? Uh, today, um, um, enterprise research is what it supports. Anything beyond that, uh, we don't have it today. So, no. Okay. Next question. Are you still discontinuing support for XML-based MX submission in Android 13 and supporting only JavaScript-based MX? If so, when can we expect a new stage now version that allows for JavaScript export for EMMs? Um, it, it, for question, first part of the question, yes. Uh, only uh, XML will no longer be used. Uh, for the second question, uh, as far as the, the beta uh, of the stage now, uh, some of them is already going around and we need to get you a date. Uh, we'll, we'll get you the date of when, a, when the first version is going to be available soon. Okay, perfect. Uh, Tyler just says thank you uh, for your presentation, Prashant. The next question from Afshin is, I have an Android 11 device and I can see the package, which is the SSM package name. Is there a setting or an app that I can interact with SSM just to see how it works and behaves? Uh, there is documentation in Tech Docs on SSM. So I, I would suggest uh, take a look at that uh, and how to use it. A uh, question here from Sean. How do partners get access to Zebra DNA Cloud to begin evaluating? Um, I would say um, get in touch with um, either your account, Zebra account managers, or get in touch with the product manager, Adam Aruda, uh, to get access. Perfect. And also, what type of access you're looking for? Uh, do you want to buy licenses? All of that, Adam can help you with that. Uh, there is also plenty of that information on what you can do without licenses and what you can, how to get a tenancy in Zebra DNA Cloud, just for your own, uh, uh, for your for your company. Um, that information is also available in Tech Docs. We have automated a lot of onboarding things. So if your goal is to just use the premium features, you may not have to do anything other than go on and uh, creating a Zebra SSO and then, try, uh, and then using our system. But all that information uh, is available on Tech Docs, but I also would suggest get in touch with Adam. Okay, great. Um, similar question, uh, but specifically for demo licenses for DNA Cloud, I'm assuming the same applies for demo licenses as well. Yeah, so there is a um, demo licensing available, trial license, they call it, and um, uh, that's also can be accessed just like any other licenses. Uh, you can also get in touch with Adam or your Zebra account managers to uh, get access to trial licenses. Okay, perfect. 
Last question is from Phil, and I think this is one for me as well. Is registration open yet for the community day? Uh, no, not quite yet, but it will be on the 6th of December, I believe, is the date that we have settled on. And uh, we will be communicating that to the community uh, shortly. We're just uh, putting the finalizations on the, the content and the structure. So you can hear more about that uh, through our DevBuzz newsletter. Uh, you can keep an eye on our developer portal, developer.zebra.com, where we'll be posting about it there. And of course, we will also be uh, promoting that at our next Dev Talk uh, on the 16th of November, I believe. Uh, just as I was uh, finishing there, there is one final question that's come through, if you don't mind, Prashant. Sure. When can we expect the manufacturing cut-in for A13 for Helios family devices? Uh, it's, um, I, I do not want to give you dates at this time. Someone else will reach out on that one. Yeah, I think that might have come internally, so perhaps we may be able to reach out to Prashant directly on that question uh, if you need a bit more information. Okay, so uh, thank you all very much for your time and attendance today. I hope you uh, learned something. I hope this information was beneficial to you. Uh, as Prashant has mentioned, you know, we kept this high level on purpose. Uh, we're going to be going into a lot more of the content and the detail and the code uh, at our EMC Community Day. And so hopefully that's uh, spurred up a little bit of interest for that. Uh, make sure to keep an eye out for our invitations for that event. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all there. So thank you all again for your time and attendance. A special thank you to Prashant as well for his great presentation. And we'll speak to you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you.